this was all circulating around the base that a giant had been killed, but no one was supposed to talk about it. I saw three long bony fingers reach up underneath the door, curl up to grab it, and then disappear. When he came over to me, dude, he slithered over to me. And this giant comes out of the cave and they're all frozen. And he starts running and firing at this giant. Well, the giant moves. He's got a spear in one hand and he's running really fast and spears Dan and holds him up like this. Somebody yells, shoot him in the face, shoot him in the face. They basically decapitate him. Got closer, got closer, got closer. When he got about 15 yards away from me, I raised that 12 gauge and I blow his head off. I feel something pulling at my leg. And I look over and there are two small gray entities pulling at me. And they're literally, I'm getting pulled off the bed. I reached my hand into this bush and I touched air. Couldn't breathe and I couldn't move because I know I'm seeing a monster. Yep. Welcome to the show, everybody. You're listening to The Confessionals. I am your host, Tony Merkel. Thank you for being here. If you've had an encounter or a story you'd like to share with me on the show, go ahead and shoot me an email. My email address is theconfessionals at theconfessionalspodcast.com. That's theconfessionals at theconfessionalspodcast.com. Or go to the website, theconfessionalspodcast.com. Hit the contact section and you can reach me that way as well. Either way works for me, just get a hold of me. And if you want more shows on a weekly basis, just go to theconfessionalspodcast.com. Hit the join button and become a member today because every Thursday we release a bonus show to members only on the website. So if you want to hear more of the show, just go to theconfessionalspodcast.com and become a member today. Now, I got an awesome announcement for everybody. So please hear this news. We have Kyle from the Dog vs. Dog Man show coming on for a live Q&A for members on the website this Thursday. That's this Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you're a member, make sure you're available to tune in live to the live show between me and Kyle. It should be on video and you'll be able to call into the show and pick Kyle's brain about his experience. There'll be a live chat where you can talk to other people in the chat and ask questions that way as well. But that's this Thursday on the website for members at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And also go ahead and subscribe to the YouTube channel, The Confessionals, The Confessionals on YouTube, because we are going to be doing a new show on YouTube called Legion of Legends, where I go hunting for the legends that we've heard about for so long on this show. So if you want to watch these journeys with me, go to The Confessionals on YouTube, hit subscribe, and don't miss a show. Now this week we have Colin coming on the show, and Colin is in the UK and he has a lot of different paranormal experiences that started off when he went to Thailand and he woke up with an entity sitting on him. And from that point on, it snowballed in his life and it became a very common thing. So let's get to Colin right now. All right. Today, we got Colin on the show. Colin, how are you, sir? I'm good, Tony. How are you? Uh, man, I'm doing good. So, uh, Colin, before we get into anything, though, I wanted to let you kind of talk a little bit here about uh, your working with Hector from episode 199. People, uh, members know who Hector is because it was a member episode, but Hector had an amazing story and uh, he has a, a ministry. And you actually, since hearing that episode, have joined his ministry, right? Yeah, yeah. So um, I heard the episode um, about 20 minutes in. I'm thinking, I hope they give an email address out because I'm going to message this guy. And then you did it at the end. Um, See, so yeah, I dropped in an email because um, I was kind of looking for some kind of prayer assistance around the time. He, he sent me one back, um, had a few sessions in, and it kind of went from there. Um, yeah, after joining the ministry, um, 
and it's smooth sailing since then. So yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So uh, if you're a member, you want to hear that show, it's episode 199, uh, Miracles and Exorcisms. And uh, I think we started off that interview with telling our own story where before we started recording, Hector prayed for me and my brother, Jack, who was in studio. And uh, he's, I, th- I forget how it all went, but he's like, do either one of you have shoulder issues? And Jack's like, I do. And he's praying and like Jack's face like is melting in front of me because he's feeling like this pain just leave his body. And uh, it, it's like when I'm looking at his face, his eyes are real big. And I'm just like, whoa, something's happening here. And um, it, Jack, Jack's shoulder was healed right there. And um, uh, last time I checked with Jack was probably about six months ago. And he said his shoulder still feels great. And it was bothering him for a while. And so uh, it was it was really interesting experience going into the interview. And then the interview itself was just awesome. Uh, so, you know, people are members that can go ahead and check that out. But Colin, uh, knowing that you're joined up with him and stuff, uh, lay the groundwork as to kind of your life in this paranormal stuff that led you up to even contacting Hector. Yeah. So, um, 33 now, um, grew up in London, fairly, fairly kind of normal childhood, um, finished school, finished college. Um, so in 2007, I went traveling in Thailand, um, with two other friends, three and a half months, kind of going around Thailand, Cambodia, Vietnam, um, got to the end of it. And I thought, you know what, I'm not quite ready to go back to the UK now. Um, I'm going to try and stay out here. So came back to the UK for a month, got some money together, went back, um, ended up teaching over there and staying over there for about seven or eight years in total. Um, so the, the weird stuff started um, probably in around uh, maybe August 2007. Um, I was staying at a friend's house in Bangkok. Um, it's in bed, it's probably about five in the morning. Um, in Thailand, the sun rises fairly early. So, you know, I could see a little bit in the room. Um, suddenly I wake up and I'm frozen. I'm completely paralyzed and there's a, a black shadow sitting on my chest, sitting on me. Um, and this is something that I'll kind of get into that, into that always come kind of accompanies these kind of sessions, these, these kind of feelings. I had this surging feeling in my head, almost like your brain's been squeezed, this kind of vibration noise just going through your head, going through your ears. Um, and I knew straight away, this isn't good. Um, I was angry. So I lift myself up. Um, and all I could do, all I could think of to do to fight this thing off is try and bite it, um, try to bite its face. And then bang, I'm back in the bed, I'm laying down and I can move. Um, so that was the first sleep paralysis kind of experience there. Um, and to be honest, I didn't know what to do with it. I, I knew something strange had happened. I knew something weird had happened, something I hadn't had experience before. Um, but I just put it to one side. I thought, you know, okay, I'm not going to think about that. Let's get on with life. Um, that, that was a bit weird. Um, so a few months later, I'm on the internet and I come across an article on sleep paralysis and kind of what other people have been experiencing around that. And they're talking about seeing a black shadow, um, you know, darker than dark sitting on top of you. Um, and I thought, yeah, that's exactly what happened to me. Um, so in that moment, I kind of realized it wasn't just a dream. It wasn't just some strange hallucination. You're having like a half sleep state millions of people around the world for years going back have been having the same experience um, and seeing the same figures, the same shadow figures. Um, so yeah, I was, to, fair to say I was quite interested then. I was looking into it. Um, but then over the next 10 years or so, the experiences really ramped up um, to the to, to the point where I was having sleep paralysis almost every night, sometimes two or three times a night um, for weeks on end. Um, sometimes it would stop for a month, then it would come back. Um, and what I came to realize is I, you could kind of tell when it was going to happen. You know, if you had a bad day, you were feeling a bit low or you, you just had this feeling before you went to bed a few hours before that something was going to happen. You could sense a presence. You could sense something in the room. Um, and it always start with that same kind of like a vroom, vroom kind of sound in your head, some kind of surging feeling in your brain. And then you'd wake up paralyzed. Um, I also started to, to connect um, dreams to these experiences. So it's almost like you would be presented a dream scenario and um, trying to get, trying to elicit a certain emotional response from you. So it could be fear, it could be something chasing you, it could be something else. And then I'll clock it. I'll realize in the dream, this isn't right. There's something going on here. And then bam, you, you're, you're in sleep paralysis. Um, you know, you can see a, a shadow with a standing next to you or, or sitting on top of you. Um, and to be honest, you know, 
that was something that just happened at nighttime. In the daytime, I tried just to forget it, you know, try and just just get on with with, with the day. Um, and then, you know, try, try and just have a good night's sleep. Um, so this kind of followed me around going back and forth from Thailand to, to the UK. Um, you know, I remember once I was staying at a friend's house and um, staying in the spare bedroom, probably about seven in the morning, sleep paralysis. And I could see these two, these two shadows um, standing next to me, a tall one and a short one. Um, so sometimes there'd be, there'd be multiple figures in the room. Um, it even happened on a plane once. Um, that's how I didn't actually see any shadows, but I'm sitting there in, you know, second class and, um, you're frozen sitting up in your chair, um, trying to shake it off. It's almost like you're, you, you know, I, I learned I could move, but it wasn't your physical body. It's almost like you're walking through, through tar, through really sticky mud. Um, and that kind of moves into the whole outer body experiences as well. Um, so, you know, the, the, the experience had just got more and more wild. You know, I'd be laying there off the bed, having a, having, a, having a sleep in the afternoon, and I'd feel something just grab my ankle suddenly in that paralysis state. Um, or I'd be in my bedroom back in the UK, I'd wake up frozen, um, and I could hear it just banging up the stairs, um, something slam the door open and jump onto the bed. Um, and I'd literally just feel the mattress depress around me. Um, and you'd be stuck like that for about, about 10 20 seconds um and there's nothing you can really do about it you could i, I realized if you try to make a grunt like a noise you can't say anything but you can kind of make a noise you can try and slowly kind of just pull yourself out of it um but yeah that went on for for a good few years um i would see you know just before i was going to bed um i'll be laying in bed kind of watching tv and that kind of half sleep sleep stage and i'll see like this black arm like a solid black blacker than black arm coming out from over the top of the television um look like a human hand look like a human arm a little bit skinny um and then you just kind of shake yourself and, and it's not there um so yeah that was what kind of those from 2007 seven onwards for about 10 years was like um and then um, the outer body experiences started. So I would be, you know, laying in bed, I'd have a paralysis um, attack. And then if you kind of relaxed or if you kind of just went with it, you didn't struggle, you start floating out your body. Um, so the first time this happened, I was floating up to the ceiling and I thought, I'm going to bang my nose on the ceiling. And as soon as I thought that, I was back in the body, frozen for a few seconds, and then, then I could move. Um, other times I'd be looking at myself in the bed. Um, or I'd be kind of laying down beside myself, kind of looking at the back of my head, um, you know, and around that time, kind of going around Thailand and that you kind of get into Buddhism, you kind of learn about meditation. So um, I was kind of intermittently meditating, I guess. Um, and I'd heard about astral projection, things like that. And it was a bit of a surprise that this stuff had actually started happening. Um, I mean, it's probably about a year before that, that I had meditated and thought about, you know, is it possible to, to astrally project? Um, and then randomly it just starts happening. Um, probably the, the crazy experience with the, the outer body is um, I floated up out of the body, through the ceiling, through the roof, looked down, saw the top of the house, looked up into the stars, um, and then literally shot through space, shot through the stars like warp speed, like, like in Star Trek or Star Wars, you know, just going through the stars. Um, and then, then it's like I'm just waking up the next morning. Um, so I didn't quite know what box to put that one in. Um, I kind of felt I'd gone somewhere. I kind of felt, you know, that was definitely something had happened then, but I didn't know how to explain it. Um, and it was quite odd to kind of shoot through the stars and then usually have a, a sense of passage of time. Like you kind of know I've slept for six hours, but it was like, bang, you're just waking up seven in the morning after that. Um, so around that time I'd be waking up in the morning thinking, I kind of feel like I've been somewhere last time, but I just can't remember it. Um, and then it got a little bit weirder. Um, so I'd be waking up in the paralysis state, but I wasn't in the bedroom. Um, I couldn't see the bedroom around me. So one time I woke up and I don't know where I was. Um, it was it was quite light. I was laying flat down um, on my back. And when I came to, I was already leaning up kind of on my right side. Um, and there was what I would call a a typical grey alien um, staring into my face, um, about six inches from my face. Um, and it kind of looked almost like half reptilian. 
Um, it didn't have scales. It didn't have overlapping scales. It almost had nodules all over its face. Um, typical big eyes, you know, small mouth, kind of slight nose. Um, and it had like a like some kind of tech on its forehead. It had some kind of tech um, on the left side of its forehead. And I just knew it was it was evil. I knew it was happy that it was seeing me in this state because I was really angry. Um, I was trying to lean up to get towards it. I don't know what was happening before that. But it's like I came to midway through that experience. And then next thing you know, I'm waking up the next morning thinking that's a bit weird. Um, better get to work. Um, so, <laughs> you know, I, probably- I, <laughs> I can only imagine going through that, waking up and like, well, that was weird. All right, time to go to work. <laughs> yeah, just go and forget about it and yeah, get your oh, suit man. on. So. <laughs> um, so yeah, it was um, a bit odd. Um, another time, you know, I'd be sitting in the evening and out the corner of my eye, I saw a large spider, like like a foot across, hanging in midair, just to, like to the right of my vision. The second you look that way, it's not there. Um, and also around that time, I was seeing lots of like blue streaks around people. So when people will pass, when I'd be kind of looking out the window, looking at, you know, the scenes of traffic going past, I would kind of notice blue streaks hanging around people. Um, and that lasted, it wasn't constantly, but that lasted for about two, three years. Um, and I've, I've got no idea what, what that was. Um, it doesn't happen anymore, but um, it was all around that, that kind of, that kind of crazy period as I, as I, as I call it. Um, so another kind of experience that stands out in my mind um it must have been about seven in the morning in the uk um probably around 2013 um i woke up and again i was really angry i was in that paralysis state uh, but i was leaning up towards this thing um and this um is what i describes just a straight up demon um it had snake eyes um, vertical slit eyes, almost elm kind of gold coloured. Its teeth, it, its its mouth was wide open. It was wide, wide open. Um, a hundred sharp fang-like teeth, and it just had its jaws just open, like it was trying to bite my face. Um, it was no hair in it, um, almost like a sickly kind of mottled yellowish brown colour. Um, and I was, yeah, it was trying to, it was like it was going to bite me its mouth was so wide open um and again i was i was just so angry um i was i felt like i've been violated somehow i just felt this thing is pure evil um and i remember looking into its eyes and there was intelligence there and and there was pure malice um so that was probably one of the the strangest kind of in your face um experiences i've had um and at the time i didn't think it was a demon i don't know what i thought it was i thought you know not being a, a strict christian at the time you know you, you're heading in kind of other ideas about the world um i was thinking oh it's some kind of interdimensional being i, I don't know how i was trying to explain it but again i was just trying to put it to one side and just kind of hope it doesn't happen again um so um also around that time i woke up laying on my front same paralysis state um, and I saw this as like a translucent old man just kind of halfway floating through the wall, just looking into my eyes as I woke up. Um, one thing I started to realise after having these experiences um, is when you're in that sleep paralysis state, um, it, it wasn't my physical body moving. It was, you could call it your, your spirit body, your astral self, whatever it is. Um, that is what could move. So with enough willpower, um, enough intent, you could actually get up. So, you know, when these things are sitting on top of you and you want to try and get up just to try and push it off, that wasn't the physical body. That was, um, it's almost like you're pulling yourself out of your physical body. Um, and also I noticed that you think really quickly. There's no kind of a delay in your brain, like your neurons firing. It is just straight, you, you know things straight away. Um, and I'll kind of get into that a bit later on. Um, but that's one thing I noticed is you think very quickly. You almost just know things intuitively. You know things straight away. Um, so around this time, I, I kind of spoke to my mum about this and surprised by she says, yeah, um, I had something like that happen to me when I was young as well. Um, so she told me about, um, you know, she was probably about seven or eight years old in a bedroom and she saw this shadow, uh, being appear, um, first on the other side of the room and then kind of disappear, appear nearer, disappear, appear nearer. And then the pillow just got chucked off the bed. Um, 
so I think that's the only thing she's ever kind of really had in that in that regards. But um, my grandmother as well has been through lots of strange experiences like that. Um, you know, she's seen UFOs before she even knew, you know, what a UFO was. She looked out the window in London in the 40s and saw these things hovering over the houses. She didn't know how to explain it, um, but it was in the in the newspapers a few days later. Um, and she also told me about when she was young, there was a room in the house where, um, where she slept initially, um, but she would feel something pushing the bed up at night time. Um, and she she had like a, a Gurkha knife. So she had swipe her knife under the bed to try and stop it. Um, her brother as well had some really kind of terrifying experiences then. Um, she also had outer bodies. Um, and she put an end to it, actually. She went to see a, a, a priest who blessed a statue. And then she put it in the bedroom. Um, and it just stopped dead. It stopped flat for her. Um, so when I kind of heard that, yeah, um, you know, other people in my family had also been through these types of experiences, um, I started to, you know, think a bit more carefully about it. Um, so I met my my current fiance in 2014, um, and then literally within a few months, she started having the same experiences. Um, she would start to have paralysis. She start to see shadows, um, really bad dreams. Um, and then we we started to have shared experiences. So we'd both be hit with paralysis at the same time. Um, so what I would do, I would I'd be hit with, with paralysis. I'd come out of my body or I'd find myself standing next to my body and I could just hear something coming up the stairs. Um, so I'd run towards the bedroom door and just try and hold the door shut um, while, whilst whatever it was, was was trying to get in. Um and so the next morning, I'm like, oh, you know, I had a mad experience last night. And she says, yeah, me too. Um, got hit with paralysis. And um, I, I, I kind of saw you getting up and trying to hold the door shut as someone was trying to come in the room. Um, so, yeah, so shared experiences. And that, that happened quite a few times. So hold on a second. Um, she actually, so if I'm hearing you correctly, you had the sleep paralysis. You had an out-of-body experience where you left your body to do this. And she had a sleep paralysis as well, where she actually saw you leave your body. Like she could see your, whatever that is, a spirit or whatever, holding the door shut. Yeah. Yeah, exactly the same wow. time. Wow. That's pretty incredible. Yeah. So uh, you're feeling a bit bad about that. You know, she'd never had anything like this. <laughs> I mean, well, I don't want to interrupt the whole storyline here, but uh, did she, was she freaked out in that moment? And were you freaked out? I mean, that that's... That's something that's on another level. It's not only are you having an experience, but you're having the same experience as somebody else and you're sharing it together. I think to her credit, she she didn't show it. She didn't show it. Um, she wasn't scared. She wasn't, you know, upset about it too much. She was concerned, definitely. Um, I was more angry because I kind of felt, you know, I, I was used to it. Um, I, but it's when it's kind of affecting your family or people you love that you start to um you start to get a little bit irritated. You start to get um, yeah yeah re really a bit angry about that um so yeah to her credit you know she didn't she didn't show any fear she wasn't you know she didn't want to leave she didn't want anything like that um and it, it probably hit her you know it probably happened to her about four or five times i would, I would say o over that over that period um but you know one thing i know it's really kind of negative experience all these things happening that last kind of that that's that, that spate for about 10 years but one thing it showed me is there's something more to this world it really, that's what really was impressed upon me. Um, it, it's not just a physical world. As you say, you know, you're born, you live, you die, that's it. I knew there was, if, if nothing else, that's what it proved to me, there was something else going on. Um, I wasn't quite ready then for the answer, um, but I I knew it was beyond a shadow of a doubt. I knew there was other stuff going on in this world. So I took the positives from it. Um, and I think she did as well. It was... Um, you know, I, you know, she'd kind of grown a Christian as well. Um, but she, I think it's also kind of proved to her that there's something else to this. There's something else to this world. Um, so yeah, th this kind of carried on, um, for, for like a few years Um activity kind of died down around 2017. Um, I got a new job, we moved house um, and I just focused purely on, you know, kids and work. Um, I tried to kind of put my mind off all this other stuff um, and it and it stopped. I didn't have any paralysis and I thought literally that's done and dusted. Um, it, it's put to bed. It's not going to happen again, <clears throat> which I was, I was fairly grateful for. Um, I was quite happy about. Um, but in 2019, it picked up again. So we'd been in this new house probably about a year and a half. Um, the first thing that happened um, was I was sitting downstairs in the living room 
everything else had gone to bed, probably about 11 o'clock at night, I'm watching TV. So sitting on the sofa, TV's in front, the stairs to my right um, with the lights on. And out the corner of my, of my eye, I just see a shadow and also a, a figure put, peek around the corner and then go upstairs. And I thought, I looked to my side, I looked to my side, I kind of thought, what was that? Um, you try and tell yourself it's just a trick of the light, you know, you just, you just, you know, it's just your brain kind of playing tricks on you. But invariably, you know, when you think you see something out the corner of your eye, you normally do. You know, I do a lot of late night fishing. Um, so many times, you know, I think I'll see something on the beach. Um, and I won't see it immediately. Then five minutes later, I'll see a fox go past. So usually when I think I see something out the corner of my eye, I do. Um, and I told my partner about this the next day. And she says, yeah, um, I was sitting upstairs in the bedroom. Um, I think it's maybe even the day before that happened. And she saw a shadow kind of just, just fly by in the hallway. Um, so it was like, okay, um, starting to pay a bit more attention then. Um, so I think it must have been about a week later. I woke up um, and I had a blue blue light in my face. Literally for like a, like a, like a split second, I woke up and I just had this bright blue light in my face. Um, and I thought it was a burglar. I thought someone was robbing the house or someone with a torch in there. Um, so I got up, but no, nothing there. Um, so I mentioned that to her as well. And she says, yeah, the other night I woke up and I thought it was a car going past the outside, but there was a blue light reflected in the mirror because it's like a mirror on the other side of the bedroom. Um, so she saw a blue light and she said, you know, I wouldn't call it an orb, but it was like a blue, small, bright light. Um, so I'm thinking to myself, oh no, you know, I haven't seen anything like that before. Let's, you know, let's not hope this is, this is, this is starting again. Um, you know, and around then that's, that's when I say to myself, you know, that's when it shifted. That's when everything changed. Um, so around that time, the last the kind of few months previous to that, I just had this feeling, um, come back to God, you know, Jesus Christ, you know, just, just look at this again. Um, and it was just like a little voice in my head. Um, you're literally out of nowhere, just thinking, you know, look at this again, you know, look at the Bible again, just, just look at this again. Um, so the, the moment the penny dropped, I was, um, I was at work on the 27th of December, 2019. Um, I was alone. It was like skeleton staff. It's only me in the office, um, sitting at the computer. And I just had this, this emotional feeling just, just overwhelm me. Um, I call it a holy, you know, holy spirit conviction. I don't know what it was, but it was literally, you know, come back to Jesus. This is it. In that moment, I felt, uh, I felt remorse. I felt, I felt really emotional. Um, I felt repentance. I just prayed, you know, I prayed out loud. Um, and that was it. Um, I, I was a Christian. I felt, I felt I had an experience. Um, don't know how to explain it, but from that moment onwards, I was a Christian and I knew my family, we, we were going to be Christians. Um, so I go home that night, I have a chat with, with my partner and she's like, yeah, yeah, let, let's do this. So that's it. You know, start reading the Bible, start praying out loud, start praying before meals, praying before bed. Um, and we started just, just really trying to live that, that Christian life and just getting back into it. Um, at the same time, this, this, this presence in the house, which is growing and growing, um, coming home every night, it literally felt like I was entering a war zone. Um, I could just feel it as I parked up. I could just feel this this evil feeling in the house, this evil presence. Um, and I, you know, I didn't know what to do. Um, I kind of looked on the internet, you find out about spiritual warfare, you know, what what do people do when they're experiencing oppression or th these types of, of issues. Um, so I went to kind of walking around every room with the Bible, just praying out loud, you know, reading Psalm 91. Um and just, just trying to pray them away, just, just asking for God's protection, asking for angels, asking for the Holy Spirit just to fill the house um, and, and just to watch over us. Um, and it kind of felt I really angered something um, because that night I had my first sleep paralysis in, in, a, in a long while. Um, we were, I was with my partner downstairs on the sofa watching, watching a movie. I'd fallen asleep. I'd kind of come to in that paralysis state. And it felt like I was getting choked. I was literally, I could not breathe. Um, and then she kind of notices me making noises. So she shakes me. She kind of moves me. Um, and I wake up. I, could, I can just move. And I was gasping for air. Um, like I just run a mile. I felt my heart was beating out of my chest. <laughs> no. And um, but from there, then it, then it just really kicked up again. Um, my, my partner, she, she kind of helps me a lot when these things happen. She will notice either because I stop breathing normally um, I'll stop snoring or she'll hear me making noises 
and that will wake her up and then she'll realize he's, ha- he's having a sleep paralysis session and, and shake me awake um so a few days later um i was going to bed my partner was already um asleep upstairs um and i'd also i'd move my daughter into our bedroom um i kind of put a mattress next to our bed just because i felt safer i felt better with her her there um and uh, partner's awake and she says you know just had some crazy dreams some really really horrible dreams she didn't tell me what they were but i could tell from the look on her face it, it wasn't good um, and I just had a feeling, you know, I'm, I'm going to pray right now. I'm, I'm going to pray for her. I felt that something was hanging around. Um, so got into bed. Um, she she fell asleep again pretty, pretty quickly. And I prayed for about 10 minutes, um, you know, just asking for protection, asking for the Lord just to watch over us. Um, and then the second I said amen, I felt this, this force, just this dark shadow just come over me, like just envelop me. Um, and I felt so dizzy. I felt literally like I was about to pass out. Um, it was taking every kind of ounce of my will just to stay conscious. Um, I, I try to prop myself up on my shoulder or on my elbow, just trying to sit up. Um, I grabbed the Bible next to the bed, um, and just, just open it and just started reading, just reading anything. Um, and this carried on for about that feeling for about 10, 15 minutes. And then I was just shaking, um, for about half an hour, I was just pale and I was just shaking. Um, and what I feel is what I kind of felt was um, something had been messing with her, giving her the, these nightmares, these dreams. And it was so angry that I prayed against it and stopped it. And so it just went all out and all out sort just trying to, trying to scare me, trying to terrify me, trying to, trying to affect me somehow. Um, so, you know, around that time I'd be, I'd be waking up through the night praying. I'd almost wake up and I'd be praying. Um, or um, I just wake up with like Bible verses going through my head. Um, so I really felt, you know, the Lord was just, was just watching over me that time. Um, it, it was a, it was a war. It was a war zone. It, that's what it felt like that house. There, there was definitely spiritual warfare going on. It was like a battle. You know, I knew these things were hanging around. I knew they'd been around for a long time for whatever reason they were, they were messing with me. Um, now it's the time for them to shift on. Um, and then I started to, you know, the penny dropped demonic. This is, this is a straight up demonic issue. Um, so I'd made a decision around that time. You know, I know the power of the name of Jesus Christ. Um, I'd heard stories. I heard people saying, you know, I rebuked the singing of the name of Jesus and, and it, and it left. Um, so I said to myself, the next time this happens, the next time I have a paralysis attack or whatever it is, I'm going to rebuke that thing in the name of Jesus Christ. Um, so it was about a week or two later, daughter was still in the bedroom, um, middle of the night for about two, three o'clock in the morning. And I was awoken and I hear my daughter's voice just saying, dad, and I'm like, yeah, kind of half asleep. I'm like, yeah, no, no reply to silence. So I go back to sleep and I hear it again, dad. And I say, yes. <laughs> and again, no reply. So I start to drop off and then I hear dad. And so I say, what? And literally that second, it felt like a rush attack. Um, I was suddenly paralyzed. Um, you, I just heard this high pitch metal kind of screeching sound. And this often accompanies like a paralysis attack. You can hear this noise, like machinery, like just, just metal, just shearing, just grating against each other. Um, and I had almost like multiple scenes of just terror, just going through my mind in a split second. Um, I froze, I was laying on my back and I saw this dark mass, this shadow coming out to my right from the ceiling corner from the corner of the ceiling um, and another figure just looming over the bed, uh, you know, a tall seven, eight foot tall kind of figure, almost like a cloaked figure just leaning over the bed. Um, and of course I told myself what I was going to do immediately. I just said, Jesus Christ, help me. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ. Um, and it just, it just receded. As soon as I said that, it just sucked back into the, into the ceiling and just away from me. Um, and then, then I'm, all I know is I'm, I'm getting shaken kind of out of it by my partner. Um, so the odd thing is, so for me, it felt like this lasted for about five seconds. So a few odd things here. Um, yeah, it lasted about five seconds. Um, partner says, no, I was trying to wake you up for about 30 seconds. Um, and also it sounds like you were speaking in tongues. Um, and also that wasn't my daughter speaking. Um, she could hear me in her, she was like half asleep. She could hear me saying, yes, yes, what? But my daughter was not speaking. Um, so I think, you know, as I was rebuking that, that thing in the name of Jesus Christ, in my mind, kind of in that state, what was coming out of my tongues was something else. What was coming out of my mouth was something else. Um, 
And for, yeah, like I say, that's when it shifted from that moment onwards. I knew the power of Jesus Christ. I knew who I was in him. Um, and I knew I could actually do something about this now. Um, before I was just a ragdoll, you know, it was, I had no control over this. You were just literally a plaything for, the, for these things. Um, but now as a Christian and kind of realizing your, your authority you have in Jesus Christ, your, your inheritance you have through Jesus Christ, um, then I could do something about it or I could rely on him to do something about it. Um, so yeah. Um, so it was around that time I, I heard your interview with Hector, um, episode 199. And I was thinking, you know, I'm just going to send this guy an email. I hope, I hope he gives out an email. Otherwise I'm going to have to try and track him down on Facebook or something. Um, but in the end, you did, you gave out his address. Um, so I dropped him an email and kind of saying, yeah, you know, could we arrange some prayers? Um, could we should have to pray with my family. He wants me back saying, yeah, um, you know, let's get kind of four to five sessions um, in, in the diary. Um, so these happened around sort of May, June time, 2019. So um, there are four other kind of prayer warriors that, that joined those sessions. Um, so typically, you know, what we do, we kind of open in prayer. Um, we would kind of do a walk around the house because it was on Zoom. Um, obviously, they're, they're in the States. I'm in the UK. Um, and we'd be praying. You know, they'd be praying. They'd be kind of rebuking anything that's, that's in the room, just, you know, telling it to leave in the name of Jesus Christ, just asking for, for angels, for protection, for the Holy Spirit, just to, just to fill the room, just to fill it, fill the room with its presence. Um, and things kind of changed then again. Um, so I, I would no longer kind of have paralysis attacks. Um, but I would just find myself out of body in the house at night. Um, and I, I just knew that there were demons around. Sometimes they would take the form of, um, of a family member. And I'll say straight, like I said, in that paralysis state, you just know things. And I just knew these, these are demons. These, these are demonic beings. Um, and I'll say straight away, I rebuke in the name of Jesus Christ. I command you to leave. You know, and they'd start changing. Their faces would start kind of swirling around and then changing to someone else, or they'd just be invisible. Um, you know, one time I was in the kitchen and I just knew something was just blocking the doorway. Um, and I don't know what it is, some kind of intuition. Maybe it's the Holy Spirit leading you, but I just knew where these things were. And it almost felt like you're clearing out the house. So it kind of really changed. My, my nights and experiences went from sleep paralysis, getting frozen, seeing shadows, to, to now just being full on out your body around the house, casting these things out. Um, I kind of felt I, sh I shook it. I, I kind of shook a lot of that those attachments off. Um, I think one of the last kind of, sort of experiences that kind of stands out for me is I was just sitting downstairs happy day you know with, with the kids and again that kind of feeling just just overwhelm me um a really kind of dark dark horrible feeling um it's almost like they're trying to terrify you they're trying to scare you i went so pale um my partner saw me kind of just walking up the stairs i was just like okay just, just take care of the kids went into the bedroom grabbed the bible and i was just praying um i was just reading the bible out out loud just praying um and it took about 15 minutes and it just went away. And I was left with this feeling of just peace, just utter peace and, and happiness. Um, so, yeah. Um, so around that time, I came to realize, you know, the power of prayer, what, what it can really do. And, you know, what you have actually as a Christian, um, who's with you, who resides in your heart. The second you're, you, you're born again, where you, where you are, you're seated in heavenly places, we know what Jesus Christ died on the cross for, for all our sins and to free us, free us completely um, and to free you from the power of the enemy, from the power of the devil. Um, and that's what I came to really, to really understand and rely on. Um, so around July, 2019. Um, so growing up in the UK, Christianity is quite reserved. Christianity is quite, um, you know, you kind of shuffle into your church on Sunday, sing your hymns, you know, go home. That's about it. Um, so the idea of a baptism in the Holy Spirit or anything like that was completely alien to me. It's something I'd never really heard of. Um, but yeah, last last summer, um, I prayed to receive the baptism um, and I did. Um, I spoke in tongues. I, I prayed. I just, I just repented. I asked for God just to fill me with his Holy Spirit, baptize me. Um, and I just started speaking in tongues. Um, and it felt like a really kind of special experience. It felt I didn't understand anything. Um, or didn't have any kind of meanings to me at that time. Um, but it felt like I was just praying out to heaven. I was just crying out to God. Um, and at the same time, my partner is in the kitchen. She's with my son and my daughter. 
and then they could hear it going on. Um, and then she she picks she she bends down to pick my son up, and she blurts out something in tongues as well. Um, so whatever it was spread. She she walks into the into the into the living room and she could just feel the presence. It just felt different in there. It felt it felt you know really comfortable. Everything just felt at peace. Um, so that kind of put an end to those kind of experiences in that house. Um, so we we then moved um, a few months after that into this house where I am now. Um, and then I'm, I'm kind of, I'm sitting down praying. I'm kind of praying to the Lord, you know, I really want to do something for you. Um, you know, I can't have gone through these experiences for nothing. I kind of feel, you know, you're leading me down the path. You you let me, you know, he's the sovereign creator of God of all. Nothing happens without him knowing. Um, and I was kind of thinking, what is, what is the point of this? You know, um, you show me these things. Um, I, I've realized who I am, who you are, who Christ is. Um and so I'm just praying, just Lord, you know, reveal the path to me. I want to do something, you know, I want to, I want to do something for you. Um, and in my head, I was really wanting to kind of get into a deliverance ministry, you know, and, and try and sort of help other people going through these, these same, these same issues. Um, so about a week later, I was praying. Um, and next day, and I was actually thinking about those prayer sessions I had with um, Hector and the other prayer warriors. Um, next day I get an email from Steph, who's another sort of prayer warrior in that ministry. And she's saying, you know, Holy Spirit prompted, um, just wondering how you're doing. Um, so I said, yeah, actually went crazy. I was thinking about you guys yesterday. Um, it'd be good to catch up. So she sends me an email back saying, yeah, you know, let, let's get a prayer in, um, kind of talk next week. Um, and so for a day or two before that, I just had a feeling that, um, I was going to join that ministry. Um, so I didn't say anything to them. I didn't ask to join. I didn't say anything. Um, so we had the meeting. It was with all the same guys that, that I'd met before that were in those, those previous sessions. And they were saying, you know, we've been discussing this, you know, the last few months, um, your name's been popping up um, just in prayer. Um, you know, how do you feel about joining the ministry? And, you know, in that second, just the, you know, the sort of the power of, of, of God was just impressed upon me. Um, this is exactly what I was praying for to you know have the opportunity to get into a ministry like that and i was like yeah you know sign me up so i think the day or two days after that we're straight into a prayer session um you know people could be going through kind of you know things going bump in the night kind of issues or kind of emotional issues or or health issues um a few of those sessions we've we've heard um chanting coming down the phone like a demonic kind of chanting coming down the phone or um, or things kind of speaking back to you, like mocking, kind of saying things back to you. Um, we've done deliverances where where people um, will feel like a squirming. So what we try and do, we keep it very sort of heavily scripture-based. We, you know, we invite the Holy Spirit in, we, we pray, you know, we let you know, you know, Jesus Christ is sovereign over this experience, is sovereign over this prayer session. Um, lots of scripture reading. And so as we're kind of doing that, you almost feel like you're wearing the enemy down. Whatever is around that person, if they're, you know, whatever issues they're going, going through, um, they'll maybe start feeling like a squirming coming up in their stomach. Um, or, you know, one person um, started throwing up. She, um, she could just feel it. Um, and then, you know, after it was done, she felt like she ran a marathon. She felt, she felt at pace. She felt better. So I knew I could see it working. Um, so from, you know, a year before where I had no idea what was going on, um, I wasn't a Christian. Um, I was at the mercy of whatever these things were, these, these, these demonic entities to, to where I was then, you know, I found Christ, I found my identity in him. Um, and now we were doing something about it. You know, we're actually helping other people going through these the same issues. Um, yeah. And so we've actually had quite a few, um, contacts through the confessionals. People have heard Hector's interview on 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 your podcast and kind of said yeah you know can we arrange a session um so yeah you know and never you know one session is never the same as the other they're always different and we spoke to di so many different types of people um so many different kind of walks of life and different kind of levels of society um lot, lots and lots of different people going through some really kind of crazy stuff um so, you know, we'd, we'd always pray, we'd devote kind of a lot of time to praying for these people. Um, one session I had, I was, um, usually I try to sleep before because it's usually about one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning, UK time. Um, so I try and get some shot before the actual session. And then um, one time I, I had a paralysis um, kind of attack and I was lifted out of the bed 
um, and I could just hear this growling. It's almost like lifted up by my neck. I could just hear this growling from the side of the room. Um, and it's almost like, you know, the enemy knows what you're going into. The enemy knows you're about to go into a prayer session and he's just trying to scare you. He's just trying to put you off. Um, so yeah, that, that's, um, that's kind of carried on to this day. We're, we're still having sessions, We've got sessions booked in. Um, I speak to my grandmother um, a while back and she, you know, she's had so many experiences, like, like, like I said, and she told me one time, it must've been years and years ago, her, her stepfather and her, um stepmother well stepmother just just passed away or well she was in the in the process of, of kind of passing away um she was at her house with her husband and before she as she died she saw her standing behind the chair so she actually saw her kind of standing out of her body um and a few months later she heard them in her head saying um can we come into you so it's a stepfather and a stepmother asking to come into her body um and for some reason she said yes um, and so she said, oh, you know, you know, nothing, nothing bad happened from that. I even felt them leave a little, a little while later. And I'm hearing this with my, you know, with, from a Christian perspective, just thinking, hang on a minute, that sounds really dodgy. Um, that doesn't, that doesn't sound right. You know, d- these demonic things are, are absolute tricksters and they, what they desire is to, is to come into a human body. So I'm kind of saying to her now, you know, this doesn't sound like, I don't think that's your stepmother or stepfather. That sounds like something trying to trick you. That sounds demonic. Um, so I was kind of thinking, you know, I need to, I need to try and pray for her. I don't know how I'm going to approach this with her. Um, I don't want to just, you know, come in and just say, now I'm going to try and cast something out of you. Um, but basically I had a chat with her, you know, sort of brought around to that, that, that um, conclusion that no, this wasn't anyone you knew. This was a demonic being trying to um, come into your body. It's basically asking for your permission to come into you. Um, trying to create some kind of emotional bond with you, trying to get you to open up to them. Um, and so she agreed to a prayer. So bring in the Bible, um, you know, we pray to the Lord beforehand. We say, you know, Lord, just, just bless us with your presence. Just, just send your Holy Spirit here. Um, you know, led her in a sort of prayer of repentance, even though she didn't know what she was doing. Just Lord, just, just forgive me for doing this. Um, I, d- I didn't know. Um, and then I placed my hands on her head I said, you know, unclean spirit, whatever you are, however many there are of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to leave. Her legs went up um, and we prayed like this for about 10, 15 minutes. Um, and she could just feel this buzzing, just this buzzing in her head. Um, and it just got louder and louder. Um, and so I asked the Holy Spirit, you know, Holy Spirit, can you please just, just fill this woman? Just, just let her feel your presence, Lord. Just, just fill her up, just fill her up from her toes to the top of her head. And she could feel this, this surging, tingling feeling coming up her feet, up her knees, up her legs, up her chest, through to her head. And this buzzing feeling just popped out. Um, and from that moment on, she was different. Straight away, she felt happy. She felt light. She felt, she, you know, she was singing. Um, she felt completely different. And she looked different. Um it was like a shadow had just been just taken away from her face. Um, and she was glowing. She was literally glowing. Um, straight away. I just noticed it straight away. Um, and then people in the house were saying, you know, what's, you know, you look different. You literally look like you're glowing. Um, so, you know, and for a few days after that, she would just fit, have these kind of uplifting kind of feelings. She, she was literally filled with the spirit. She felt, she felt completely free. So I think for years she had these things inside her. They never left. Say they desire to inhabit human bodies. We know that from the Bible. You know they they view a human body as a house, and they don't give it up easily. Um, so it was the Holy Spirit just just pushed that thing out, um, and she she literally was glowing. Um, so about 10, 15 minutes after that, feeling kind of good. You know, I feel really happy. Like she's freed because um, I'd also been having some odd dreams as well, which I kind of felt was uh, was connected to that issue with her. Um, and then my partner says to me, would you pray for me as well? Um, and I think she was kind of thinking we'll do it tomorrow. Um, but I, I just felt, no, let's do it right now. You know, straight up in the, in the utility room. Um, and she had had this shoulder issue and these kind of, um, almost like a cold shoulder, like a hunch kind of like really tight feeling across her shoulders for about 10 years. And also her jaw, um, she had a really tight, um, tight feeling across her jaws um, which was painful pretty much all the time and she thought this was from like her day studying kind of leaning down too much and kind of writing on a notepad 
Um, but she says, yeah, you know, would you, would you pray for me? So I was like, okay, let's do it now. Um, we prayed to the Lord. We just, we just thanked him for who he was. We thanked him for, for, for his word, for the salvation in Jesus Christ, um, for, for letting us know who we are in, in Christ and for his Holy Spirit. We just asked for the Holy Spirit just to be present, just to fill this room, put my hands in her head, started praying and she got dizzy. She, 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 she kind of held on to something just to stand up, um, just saying, you know, unclean spirit in the name of Jesus Christ, whatever's, a, was it, whatever's attached to this woman, I command you to leave. Um, and and she, yeah, she just kept on feeling dizzy. So I take my hand off, pray again. And then she just felt that same tingling feeling. We're asking for the Holy Spirit just to come in. She felt that same tingling feeling just coming up her whole body, this kind of warm feeling just rising, rising, rising. And then the pain just left her straight away. Um, literally immediately, her shoulders relaxed. Um, they, she was standing differently. There was no more pain. She said it felt like the blood returned to her shoulder, um, like there was warmth there again, and her jaw was just completely free. Um, and she was glowing. Like my nan, she was literally glowing. Her face was light. Um, and I, I saw this again later on before bed. I looked at her and I was thinking, you look different. It's almost like, again, like a shadow being removed from your face. Um, she was lighter. She looked light. <laughs> um, and and that carries on to this day. That pain's never, never come back. And jaw pain's never come back. Um, and, you know, she, she can't explain it apart from saying, you know, that was the power of God. That was the power of God. Maybe something had been attached to her. Um, because, you, you know, it, I think demons do cause, we you know from the Bible, they cause physical affliction. They cause, they cause illnesses. Um, they can cause emotional turmoil, emotional trouble. And they can kind of almost like lodge in certain areas in the body and just, just, just cause trouble. That's what they're here to do is to kill, maim, and destroy. Um, it will just to stop you serving Christ effectively. And, you know, power of God, the power of Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, that, that thing was just gone straight away. There wasn't any, any thrown up. There was no scream. There was no writhing around, nothing like that. It was just an easy done. Um, and she, and she, she felt good. Um, so that was just amazing for me to kind of go through. That's the first kind of hands on deliverance. Um, I've kind of, I've kind of done. Um, so it felt, it felt like a very special thing to do that for, for people you love. Um, so, um, going off from then, I've had a few kind of other strange experiences, not like a full out paralysis, but really strange dreams, you know, things trying to get into the house. Um, and they're always, you know, I always just rebuke them in the name of Jesus Christ and it stops or they go away. Um, so for the last week, um, I've really been feeling, you know, I've been waking up, been dropping off to sleep, waking up about an hour later and just feeling this presence in the room. Um, I pray and it and it seems to go away. Um, but the other night I I wake up um, bit in it and I'm lucid dreaming. I, I'm like waking up in the dream. It's daytime. I stand up. I walk to the to the window in the bedroom and I look outside and there's two there's two pine trees there. And I just know there's there's, there's two demons in these trees just standing in the bushes hiding so i open the window i point at them and i say i see you in the name of jesus christ i rebuke you i command you to leave and they kind of come out and i can sort of half see they're almost like translucent you can kind of see their their figure you kind of see what they look like but you can't actually see them solidly um and then i, I, I kind of realize i can feel the bed i'm standing up looking out the window but my body, all my physical sensations are telling me I'm in the bed still. Um, it's almost like a vision. It was almost like what I was seeing was being overlaid. Um, you know, I was seeing something different, but my, my body was feeling some, uh, um, another area. So I put my hand out and I could feel my son's hand. So I'm thinking, this is really weird. My eyes, <laughs> everything in my eyes are telling me I'm standing up looking outside the window and it's daytime. But actually, I could put my hand out and I can feel the bed. I can feel my son next to me. Um I don't know what that was, some kind of dream scenario, some kind of dream they've given you, some kind of vision, I, I don't know. But then suddenly I hear, I hear this voice, um, the creepiest, the nastiest kind of, you know, like call them out, Lord of the Rings kind of voice, just say, we're going to kill you. Um, and that second, I'm just literally dragged out the bed from my ankles by these two creatures um, never saw them solidly, um, but I, I had the sense they were small, um, almost like children. They were small. Straight away, I'm on the floor of the bedroom, um, and one's choking me. One's kind of, I'm laying on my back. One is 
sitting on top of my head, just choking me. I can feel the hands around my neck. The other one's holding me down. And I'm just thinking, what is going on? Um, I start trying to say, I rebuke you, you know, but I can't say it because I'm being choked. I can't get the word rebuke out. So I think, you know what? I'm, I'm not going to struggle. I'm just going to call out to Jesus Christ. Um, I'm just going to call to Jesus Christ. Um, and I just start saying, Jesus, Jesus, help me. Jesus Christ, help me. Um, and then this golden light um, appears from the other side of the room. And all, in that second, all I want to do, I just want to see something good. I just want to see something of God. I want to see an angel, whatever it is. I just want to see something good because these things just felt absolutely evil. Um, and yeah, this, this golden light, not crazy bright, not dazzlingly bright, just this golden warm light just fills the room from my left side. Um, and I see this thing just shoot up, just shoot up, um, just float up straight through the ceiling. Um, and then that's it. I'm in my bed kind of thinking, well, that was, um, that was crazy. Um, but what I think what was kind of important to me about that, that kind of experience was I didn't rely on myself at all. Um, I sat back and I thought I can't struggle. You know, these things are too strong. I can't struggle. I'm just going to wait for Jesus Christ. I'm just going to call on Jesus, whether it was Jesus, whether it was an angel that appeared, um, but something happened there, something, something good, you know, something of God happened there. Um, and this light appeared and it just drove them away. Um, you know, and then, yeah, that, that was about five days ago. And the last few nights I've just felt, um, you hadn't really been getting that much sleep, but, um, yeah, you just wake up, you feel this presence and I just straight away pray. And I just feel at peace. I just feel better. Um, and so, yeah, that's a, that is a summary of what's been going on since, since about 2007. Jeez, man. So that is a jam packed life in just what, 13 years, 14 years. That's crazy, man. Do you think that whatever happened in Thailand spawned this whole thing? Or do you think that whether you were in Thailand or not having that initial experience that this would have happened? I've often thought that. I've often thought that. Um, I don't. I don't. I don't think so. I don't know. Um, it's not like I kind of got into anything crazy out there. You know, any meditation, any temple visits, anything around that time. Um, but it was a bit strange. It did just happen first of all in Thailand. I'm not sure to be honest. Um, I mean, I know I had things happen when I was younger. Um, I know I had really, really bad dreams. Um, literally every night till I was about five, which I can never remember, but I know. It was pretty terrifying. Um, so no, I, I don't know what triggered it. Um, and what was on it, just, yeah, he, from that moment onwards, he just followed me around. It was, um, yeah, I, I can't, I can't explain it. Yeah. And you know, what I found interesting is throughout your stories, a couple of times you said that you just got really angry. Um, do you, is that like a, a self-defense mechanism in you that you naturally like if you're scared you get angry or is there is there something more maybe supernatural about it that was driving you into this like irate rage I, I don't know um what i tend to think maybe it's just a natural thing it's like a guy thing you know you you, you can't do anything so you you try and fight back um because what i realized is i was powerless until i came to christ i was powerless trying to do that on my own you know getting angry trying to bite these things or push them away that was all futile you know there's nothing i could really do because it didn't stop anything it was only when i i came to jesus christ and i rely on him that i could actually do something about it or that i could rely on him to do something about it to save me um so i think to be honest it's probably just an, a natural reaction um and it happens at first I'll, I'll be honest it was it was a bit scary you know you, you know it happened three four in the morning and you wouldn't really want to go back to sleep because uh, it could happen again um, but after a while, you just kind of get used to it. Um, and that's when I think you start to get a little bit irritated because you just kind of want it to end. Um, yeah. And so yeah, the, the, the whole biting thing that you said that a few times too, I've never heard anybody say that, <laughs> that, that their reaction was to bite it. I mean, uh, didn't your mom ever teach you not to bite? I mean, <laughs> I, I, I've never heard people say that uh, multiple times that the, the only thought they had was to try biting it. I mean, where'd that come from? I, I think because I felt I couldn't, it was easier to move my, my chest and kind of my body upwards than, than, than my arms. You know, it's, it's so much effort when you're in that state to actually move, to, to try and do something. I think that's why you, you feel like your arms are literally being held down. So the only thing you can do is is, is try and bite, is, is try and um, 
try try and get my way that way. I think. Man, that's interesting. That's really interesting. Uh, now, uh, here's another. Th- this I know these three questions have been very random, but uh, because you're in the UK and. Uh, you know, I, I hear people's stories and, and I have what 90% of the audience that, you know, is on the show or people who are on the show are from the United States. Um, when whatever it was told you that it was going to kill you, you heard that audibly, right? Yeah. 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 Lay next to me in the bed. Now, it, it, this actually might have an actual deeper, deeper qu- meaning behind the question. Actually, now that I think about it, did whatever you hear, did it have an accent like a uk accent no it, I, I couldn't put an accent on it it was it wasn't human it didn't sound like human vocal cords it was like you know like gone about lord of the rings it was like it was like we're going to kill you kind of voice it was yeah. really deep and just just evil sounding okay um i didn't have an accent i couldn't place an accent on it um because you know i I just I, when you said that, maybe it's because you know to me you have an accent, and obviously to to you I have an accent. Um, I, I I hear you say that, and I'm thinking to myself, I wonder if it actually had an, a UK accent because you know uh, the, these things you know they they appear to people in in certain forms, and you know obviously if you're in the Middle East and you have a demonic attack and it speaks to you, it's going to speak to you in your native language that you understand. And I just I was thinking, I wonder if. You know, if it's speaking to you in a native language that you would understand, does it have an yeah. accent too, or what? I didn't know. It, I mean, it's an interesting point. I mean, I think these things are are very clever. I think they've been around for a long time. They're extremely deceptive and very cunning. Um, I mean, you hear about you know different ministries and kind of people out there in, in foreign countries doing these things, where these demons will kind of speak through someone in their own language, a language that person does not know. Um, See, so, yeah, I think no matter what, you know, who they're coming through, who they want to speak to, they can they can speak in your language. They they can get their point across to you. Yeah, it's interesting, man. Uh, listen, I think it's really cool that you linked up with Hector, and now you're part of that ministry. And the way it happened, you know, you wanted to, but you didn't ask, and then they asked you. And uh, I, I and just hearing your side of things, the fact that so many people have reached out to Hector through this show, uh, I think is really, really cool, man. And uh, man, I appreciate you coming on and sharing these stories. It's really fascinating. Yeah, cheers, Tony. I mean, yeah, we've got loads of kind of contacts through your show. People listen, so yeah, it's, it's great to kind of kind of speak to your listeners that way. And do, do you mind if I give out our, our website and our email address yeah, just absolutely. in case anyone's kind of having issues like this they kind of feel they want someone to pray for them they feel like going through some kind of demonic oppression or anything like that yes um, go for in it touch. yes so uh, email is the centurion 813.com and the email address is the centurion 813 at gmail.com could you spell so, that yeah. for the listening audience so they know for sure that they're emailing and getting the right spot yeah so it's the c e n t u r I O N eight thirteen the numbers dot com. Awesome. And it's the same for the Gmail um, email address as well. Well, that's the show, everybody. I really hope you enjoyed it. And if you did enjoy it, please share the show with your friends. I don't care where or how you share the show. Just share the show if you enjoyed it, because that's the best thing you can do to help this show grow. Just share it with your friends. And remember, we do have another podcast called Hammer Lane Legends. My dad and I put on on a weekly basis. So if you want more content there, go over to hammerlanelegends.com or just look it up in any podcast playing app and you can listen. We've been doing it for over a year and there's a lot of great content on there. So go ahead and check that out. And until next week, friends, stay safe, take care, and remember, the truth will set you free, but first it'll piss you off. Bye. I'm just feeling probably like you. I'm just drifting probably right beside you. All the abyss control from afar. What did we miss? Now we're left with the scars. We love the lows, but hate the highs. Here's the other side of the sun. With all this glow, it's hard to hide. The light is bright. We love the lows, but hate the highs. Hard to find. Bright is bright. 
Everybody wanna preach a happy median. I see they dopamine fix come from media. Now your spirit getting booked on Expedia. So search a light long island medium. I should have been taught. Sleepwalk through life, but being woke is an insult. They should have been caught. They wanna slut it in fear by trying to not on the asphalt. We love the lows, but hate the highs. Here's the other side of the sun. With all this glow, it's hard to hide. It is bright. It is bright. We love the lows, but hate the highs. Here's the other side of the sun. With all this dark, it's hard to find. It is bright. It is bright. Masking from elites, got us attaching what is free. Now we're rationing our needs for our soul. Yeah. We're not fasting from belief. The smell of sharpies, right the streets. Looting liabilities like it's gold. Atomic number 79. Gucci, Prada, Jordan High. Sniff that line, it's on the house. Till your soul. The ones that keep us locked for the felony time Or the ones that fund the dollars for the BLM sign Y'all ain't really doing what y'all supposed to Y'all just follow suit like the rest do oh, yeah. We love the lows but hate the highs Here's the other side of the sun With all this glow it's hard to hide It's bright, it's bright We love the lows but hate the highs Here's the other side of the sun With all this dark it's hard to find it's bright. Hey, thanks for watching The Confessionals on YouTube. If you like what you heard, hit the subscribe button, hit the share button, and hit the like button. That would be a great help to me. And if you want more of The Confessionals on a weekly basis, every Thursday I come out with a special show just for members on my website. So if you want to check that out, go to theconfessionalspodcast.com, hit the join button, and become a member today. And every Thursday, you'll get a new show, and you can binge on previous shows, which there's almost a 100 of them. So if you love the show, go ahead and check it out. But thank you very much for being here on YouTube and checking out the channel.